Hello everyone, welcome back to my Facebook Live. I'm Supriya Raja and I am the founder of the Power Reading Hub. Well, as mentioned today, in today's live, the topic is about compliance. That is, getting your child to comply without screaming, without shouting, without creating any kind of tension. Because this is one particular topic where many parents have always approached me and told me that they struggle with their child listening to them and then they end up shouting, beating, you know, and creating a very tense atmosphere at home. That's the reason I thought, why not create this particular life dedicated to those parents who are struggling with getting their child to comply with them through positive means and effective means. Well, now coming back to compliance, when you say complying, getting your child to comply means what? Getting them to listen to you. And when you say they're not compliant, it means that, yes, they're not listening to you and they are, you know, creating a lot of tension at home by refusing to listen to you. Now, when you come to compliance, the first thing we need to understand is what are the signs of non-compliance? Okay, why do a child not listen to you? More than that, what are the signs that can tell you that your child is not listening to you? So the first thing is your child will be throwing a tantrum. When you say, okay, do this homework or please, you know, do, watch, stop watching TV. Your child is going to be saying, no, I want to watch TV. I would like to watch TV. I like this. I will do it only after this particular cartoon. You know, I will switch off the... TV only after this particular cartoon. Basically, there'll be a lot of tussle between you and your child. So the first thing, first sign could be in the form of defiance, like saying no to you. The second sign that your child is not compliant could also be in the form of whining. So when you're saying, okay, let's get to start doing homework, and your child will be like, I don't want to do homework. It's so boring. I just can't do this. I hate this. My hand is paining. All those kind of things. You know, very whiny and a very whiny too. So that is the second sign that your child is not complying with you. The next sign that you can pay attention to, which shows non-compliance, is that your child will just switch off or tune off when you're saying something. This is very much prevalent in, you know, not just younger children, but a little older children also. So when you're talking to your child, in the, okay, stop talking on the phone with your friend, your child will still continue to talk. You know, they, they just they just won't listen. They just tune off. Or you are talking about, okay, in this particular test, you didn't get a very good mark. That means you were not studying properly or you did not prepare properly. When you go on and on and on, you will notice that your child is just switched off. Your child is not showing any reaction. Your child is probably looking at the blank wall. So you can make out that he or she is just not bothering about what you're shouting. Okay, that's another way to show defiance or non-compliance. Now, whatever I'm talking here, I would like to say that it's not only for young kids, but it could also range from kids in the age group of six years, seven years, even way up to 12, 13 years. So these are very general signs, but you can actually kind of connect which aspect of uh, you know uh, science of non-compliance is suiting which is working uh, which is uh, suiting to your child okay so this is the next sign of non-compliance the next the next sign that you will notice that your child is listening very selectively that is he or she will listen to only those particular you know statements that is suiting him or her and not and just switch off what is not suiting him or her like, for example, okay, you might say, let's do this. Let's watch this uh, program on TV for half an hour. Well, that they will watch. Yeah, fine. Why not? And then you will say, okay, after that, we will start studying for the test. That will not be heard. You know, then they will just switch off. They will not want to respond to that. So they're selectively listening to what they want to hear and selectively not listening to what they don't want to hear. So this is another sign that your child is not complying with you. So you see, compliance doesn't mean only throwing tantrums, but it could also be in a very subtle way, like I said, switching off, subtle way, like selectively listening. In a very, you know, it doesn't always have to be very obvious. <clears throat> the next sign that your child is not compliant is they will conveniently forget to do things. 
and conveniently bring up excuses. Like if you say, okay, why didn't you complete this homework? Then they'll say, oh, my mother, like, if you, my, my teacher did not um, give this particular homework actually. You know, I, I, my teacher said, it's okay, even if I don't do this homework by tomorrow, or my, you know, my teacher said it can be done even next week. It's not very urgent. Some kind of reason, some kind of excuses they'll come up with for not doing some work, not doing their homework or whatever it is. So some kind of excuses they'll bring for not doing their work. Or if you say, okay, where is your pencil box? Why didn't you, uh, why didn't you finish the homework? They'll say, oh, I forgot the pencil box in school. I don't have a pencil now. So I'm not able to do it. No, what can I do? I don't have a pencil right now. So these kind of very silly, silly things they come up with, but it'll be some kind of, it'll be just in the form of an excuse for not doing something. So this is another sign of non-compliance. Now let's see what are the reasons why a child will not comply. I'll be stating some of the reasons here, which are pretty, you know, I'm sure many of you can relate to. The first reason would be that your child is not getting enough attention. Yes, because sometimes as parents, we are so busy in our own schedule that we don't have time, adequate time for our children, right? So a child is asking for attention, a child is seeking attention. So in that case, what happens is that when they're not getting the right kind of attention, they are okay with getting the wrong kind of attention as well. So they will throw tantrums, they will be shouting, all kind of, you know, they can also show irritability, all those things, just because they are wanting attention. So in that case, make sure that you are giving adequate attention to your child and spending enough time with your child also. The second reason why a child may be not compliant is that maybe there's a new arrival at home. That is, if there is a sibling, a new a sibling has been born in the house, your child may feel a little bit insecure thinking that, okay, now that my younger sister or my younger brother has come, I may not be having adequate attention. Mommy and Papa will not love me enough. So that can also cause a lot of anxiety in the child's mind, causing the child to act very funnily or in a very de defiantly. Because that again is the issue of feeling insecure, feeling scared that my parents will not pay attention to me adequately. The third reason of why your child will be non-compliant is that your home atmosphere itself is not very conducive. Yes, this is so important because as parents, we are we have to ensure that we keep a very, very good atmosphere at home, a very harmonious atmosphere at home by not fighting with each other as you know parents or, or as couples. So that when your child is you know in an atmosphere where there's a lot of toxicity, there's a lot of shouting, there's a lot of name calling, your child thinks that maybe that is the right way of behavior. Maybe that's how it is. And that can also cause a lot of stress in your child's mind, causing the child to actually imbibe those energies, those toxic energies that's circulated in the house through our own, you know, shouting and uh, all kind of, uh, you know, negative behaviors. They also will get that as the form of energy and they will also exhibit that maybe at home and also in the school. So that is an under reason why a child may show non-compliance or irritability. The another reason why a child will show non-compliance is that maybe in the school, the child is getting bullied or the child is getting teased or maybe the teacher is too harsh to the child that your child is actually holding up a lot of pent up anger, pent up emotions, which is not coming out. So what happens is the child cannot show it in the school. So what happens is the child comes home and displaces that emotion at home. This is called a displacing behavior, wherein the child is not able to show action, those kind of emotions in the school, but comes home and shows it off to other people or the near and dear ones. That's called displacement. So this could be another reason why a child may show non-compliance. Another reason why a child will not be compliant is this is something when many people haven't discussed it and that is if the child has not been maybe the child has attention deficit hyperactive disorder adhd but the child has not been diagnosed so it has actually 
it's there in the child system adhd is that is there in the system but the child but the diagnosis hasn't taken place and it has not been addressed or has not been treated so untreated adhd can also manifest in a, a little more severe form in the form of conduct behavior okay conduct behavior disorder which means the child will actually defy authority the child will question authority the child can get aggressive also so this is also something very important to be taken in mind if the child's adhd has been untreated and is has been going on for years then maybe by the time the child is 11 years or 12 years slowly it will manifest in a more severe form in the form of conduct behavior disorder so these are some of the reasons why a child may show non compliance okay so the next thing that i would like to talk about is one you understood the signs of um, why uh, signs of non compliance second thing is the reasons why a child will show non compliance and the third thing is that what can we do as parents to actually help our child to start compliant and create a more harmonious atmosphere at home the first thing is you have to be as parent be very observant that is just pay attention to the fact that is the child is non compliance generally non compliant or is he in every situations throwing tantrum is he in every situation saying a no or is it only to specific situations it doesn't only come to academics doesn't only come to sharing the toys with the sister or brother so that is something you have to pay attention is if if it's in across all situations then there is something more inherent that's going on and has to be addressed through a therapist or a counselor but if it is to specific situations then you can pick up those situations and correct it now how do we do that the first thing is understanding your child paying attention through so when you say observation how do we observe that is by understanding who your child is and how can we do that that is by spending more time with your child exclusively that's very important so if you are able to spend every day at least 10 15 minutes playing with your child talking with your child interacting with your child engaging with your child you will be able to understand your child better you will be able to communicate better with your child and also your child will also be able to understand you better that's extremely important because when there is a better understanding of one another there will be better trust and better bonding between each other because guess what the relationship between a parent and a child is equally important and it also has to be nurtured as much as a relationship between spouse because we as parents think that okay he or she is our child we don't really have to work work with that work through that relationship and that i know my child very well more than anybody else but it is still imperative that you need to work with your relationship with your child every day so the best way is to spend time with your child understand with your child and know your child's love language and know how your child communicates because when you do that your child will also develop the bond the trust with you and then the the resistance will come down and automatically maybe slowly to the child will start complying or listening to you so this is one thing the second thing is setting clear boundaries yes this is very important now yes we know that there are certain expected behaviors uh, sorry accepted behaviors and non accepted behaviors so for instance if a child you know acts out a lot when in a public situation or in a public area maybe in a mall or maybe in a restaurant making a lot of noise or throwing tantrums you need to set expectations beforehand before you leave to the particular place but suppose in this case you're leaving for the restaurant you need to tell your child beforehand that we are going here and this is what is expected out of you which is very important to know so the child knows the kind of behavior that's expected and that the child will have to exhibit that kind of behavior the second thing is to set boundaries one is clear it clearly explain to your child this is what you have to do this is what you have to be you know this is we are going here and this is what is expected and the second thing is setting clear boundaries that is if your child is not going to be compliant you will have to tell beforehand that if you are not doing this this is what will happen and yes you will have to also 
not just set the boundaries you will also have to take it in action now let me tell you something the same thing that happened in my life also as an example when my child when my son was around 3 years of age we had gone to a mall in mumbai with my dad so it was me my son and my dad so in the mall he saw a particular toy it was a plane now is the fact that you know when he, when we had landed in mumbai my father had got him a beautiful big plane a toy plane so when he went to the mall he saw another plane and he wanted that now he said i want that and i told him no you aren't getting that so he went to my dad and my dad said ask your mom so when he know that you know he knew that we are not really getting what he wanted what did it was he went in the in the middle of the in the arena in the you know in the atrium and he just lied down he come he just lied down and he was throwing tantrums shouting screaming and just lied down and he refused to come so my father got really embarrassed he said look just buy this toy for him because he's embarrassing all of us everybody around us is staring at us and we are it's just becoming a spectacle so then i told my dad like it's okay if he is throwing a tantrum if he's deliberately lying down i don't care i don't you know it it doesn't matter because he is doing this deliberately he knows that if you're going to buy him this toy now and i have already told him that i'm not buying a toy and if i buy it now he will again play it out again and again and he'll do the same thing so even if somebody is watching even if people are watching and even if people may be commenting on us it doesn't matter let him try let him you know lie down in the middle of that mall and what it was i told my dad okay let's just carry him now and take him to the auto rickshaw so we carried him with him screaming with him shouting with him beating me and everyone watching us of course we took him to the auto rickshaw and we just went back throughout the journey he was so angry he was huffing puffing he was beating us he, he was really angry but guess what he did not repeat the same behavior again so what i'm trying to say is that yes sometimes it is difficult as parents that we need to exercise what we say we need to enforce the boundaries that we are putting because otherwise what happens is that those kind of behaviors again and again start you know taking over and they again and again exhibit the same kind of behavior that we are you know we don't want them to do that is so important that we need to enforce what we are we need to enforce those boundaries that we are setting the next thing that you can use is positive reinforcements that is very true now positive reinforcements is not bribery which means that you are giving them some kind of you know appreciation positive reinforcements could be in the form of appreciation could be in the form of a star a sticker it doesn't have to be an expensive gift at all right so what happens here is that the child actually is feeling that he has earned the sticker or earned the reward now how do you do this is that you can actually take up two three target behaviors like suppose you want the child to sit for homework within 2 minutes of you telling you can set that as one target behavior and you can tell your child okay now that this if you're going to be sitting within 2 minutes of me telling you you get a star now this kind of thing you have to tell the child if you're going to be doing this on 3 days or 4 days i'll be giving you 3 4 stars on consecutive days once you earn the four stars you will get your favorite gift it doesn't have to be an expensive gift at all it could be a pencil box it could be a ball very simple gift right so when the child has you know achieved those four five stars and then got the gift the child will feel that he has earned that gift and the child will value that gift more and also slowly over a period of time you will be able to modify the behavior so this is called a behavior modification technique and it is a positive way because here you're not shouting here you're not like you know you know beating and all that it's you're gradually shifting the child's behavior to the expected target behavior so these are some of the ways that you can actually help your child even set boundaries i mean to set the right kind of uh, you know behavior and also ensure that compliance takes place the next thing is that even as parents you need to set the right kind of atmosphere at home yes like i said in the previous section that the child you know who, where there's, there's a lot of fight in the hap- fight happening in the house where there's a lot of shouting and screaming happening in the house the child thinks that that is a normal form of behavior and the child will also start emulating the same behavior that parents do 
right so as parents we also need to be very careful as to how we talk with each other in front of our young child if you're going to be shouting at each other name calling you know towards each other in front of the child it creates a very wrong impression in the child's mind rather than if you have something you know you want to argue with your partner your husband or wife it's better that you do it in the privacy of your room and not in front of your child because they are observing you and they are going to be emulating and modeling exactly what you do if you're going to be talking you know negatively doing the same calling they are going to be absorbing the same thing and they're going to be doing the same thing so this is something you'd be very careful so as far as possible try and create, create a very positive atmosphere at home the next thing is i this is something i have myself tried and that is allowing the child who is not compliant to face the consequences yes this again i can tell you from my uh, that's an incident that took place in my life as well again when my child was of the age group of i think 4 years he was very much addicted to kurkure he wanted to eat kurkure so what happened was like i kept telling him this is not good for health it's really very really bad it can cause a lot of tummy issues but he was not ready to listen to me he was refusing to listen to me and he was constantly asking for kurkure so what i thought okay in spite of me explaining so much he's just not listening and he keeps on throwing tantrums if i wasn't giving him he would go to his grandparent and get that so what i said okay fine if you're going to if you really want it so badly have it just just have it so he had it for one day he had it for the second day by the time he had it for the third day guess what he was down with a bad stomach and a slight temperature because there was a temp- there, there was an infection i had taken to the doctor and the doctor said okay this entire week he is going to be having only bland food and these are the medications etc so that entire week he was through he he saw for himself what happens if he's going to be having all these junk food for a prolonged period of time so yes it's not easy as a mother it was not easy for me as well to see my child suffer going through that phase but sometimes it's you know it it is mandatory that your child actually face the consequence you can you know you don't have to do it the way i did it suppose a child is refusing to do homework you know yesterday there was a discussion on homework if a child is refusing to do homework let me tell you let him not do the homework let him not do it let him go to school and face the consequence of not doing the homework automatically things will get better you know so it's okay for the child to face consequence and allow the child to face consequence this way the child will actually take in more responsibility and be more accountable to whatever he or she is supposed to do especially with respect to his or her duty right <coughs> excuse me so these are some of the very important things that you can do at home to help your child to comply with you these are very powerful strategies in fact in my paid program i do have more detailed you know detailed way that i explain to parents in fact when parents come to me with their stuff with the you know with the strategies as explained i also give them customized solutions in my paid program to help them to resolve their issue that's happening in their house right so this is something that i also have in my paid program empower teaching blueprint coming to the next section which is about okay if your child if your child is refusing to read this is something very very common many parents say that to me as well that because i am someone who always promote you know early reading experiences at home now yes parents come come and tell me saying that okay supriya you are telling that you know my child should read my child should do this but my child is refusing to read my child doesn't want to read and i'm finding it very difficult what do i do so in that case you can use a couple of strategies here that i'm mentioning the first thing is do not force if your child is refusing to read just don't force it's okay right you don't even have to tell take a book and say let's start reading in fact you can you will have to have to actually develop an interest in stories and that you can do by instead of story reading by story telling okay so suppose for example you are you you have bought this uh, story book for any of this panchatantra stories and you want you are so excited to read your child and your child is refusing to do that just start narrating the story and when your child gets interested and curious about the story then you can introduce the book to your child that 
it, that makes it a very organic, a very easy transition from just story reading towards storytelling. The next thing you can do is get your child also involved in buying and selecting the book. Because this is something where parents make a mistake is that they select the books for the child. So instead of doing that, let your child just select the book, right? So what happens here is that if they are also participating in selecting the book, they will be more interested and they will be more uh, wanting to read the book rather than when you are yourself buying the book for them. So that is something very important. Get your child to be participative in selecting the book. The next thing you can try is color coding. This is very interesting. You know, suppose your child's favorite book is favorite color is blue, for example. So you can actually pick up books which are blue in color, which has the you know the 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 the, the book cover as blue in color. Whatever the story may be, whether it's snotty, whether it is Thomas Train, whatever, just get or whether it is Dr. Seuss, whatever the book may be, just get all the books with the color with a uh, cover of the color blue. That is very interesting. Then maybe after 10 days or 15 days, you can select the next color. You can probably select books, three, four books of the color yellow. Then after that, the color red. This way, the child, this also creates a kind of excitement and fun in the child's mind towards sitting for reading sessions. The next thing you can do is, yes, you also have to be somebody who loves reading. Because if your child doesn't see you reading, your child is going to think it's a boring thing, it's a, it's a chore. Anyway, in the school, we are making me read by should read at home. So if you want your child to read without forcing or yelling, you should also be setting good examples by reading yourself. If, and if you're not an avid reader, it's okay. You can read the newspaper or guess what? You can also take your child's book and start reading. Your child will be amused seeing you reading his or her book. And your child will also sit for the session and say thing, saying that, okay, mommy, okay, daddy, what are you reading? You're taking my storybook and reading. What are you reading? I want to know. That can be a very, you know, it can be a very nice way and a very, uh, you can actually trick your child to sit with you for a reading session by picking the book yourself, picking the child's storybook yourself and reading your child's storybook also. <clears throat> the next thing you can do if your child is really bored about reading is, creating a reading challenge among friends. Children respond very well in a group setting. So you can actually call three, four friends of your child and you can, you know, create a challenge like, okay, today, let's see how many of you are going to read this, this particular week, this particular book. So suppose there are three, four friends and there's a challenge. There'll be a lot of competition, right? So your child also will be very interested to win the challenge. So will the other children. So this, this uh, competitive spirit and competitive environment will also enable your child to get into the reading sessions as well. <coughs> so these are some of the ways that you can ensure that your child sits for reading session and your child is also will be interested in reading. Yes, in my paid program, I have a course which tells 20 creative ways and interesting ways you can read your child. So that is also something that you can think about getting into my paid program. And if you're someone who wants to know more about what I'm offering in my paid program, especially for helping your child to become a curious reader or a curious learner, to become a lifelong reader and a leader, come in for a one-to-one -one free clarity call with me where I will help you, you know, and I'll tell you and I'll also help you, guide you into the journey as to how you can empower yourself to inspire your child to be a curious reader and a learner. So if you like this particular live, do comment in the section which aspect of the live section that you like and how are you helping your child to comply with you and how are you helping your child to become a curious reader as well. I would love to read your comment. So until my next live, you have a great evening. Have a nice evening. Happy reading and happy parenting. Bye-bye.